let's begin. I am the one and only MSJ, Max for short, and welcome to the 31 Days of Fright Horror Movie Project Year 8. And I'm doing a podcast format this time around because um, for the days that I've missed, I just haven't really quite been up the snuff to being in front of the camera. I haven't really been quite in the mind, quite right mindset. I've been really tired. I've been missing some sleep here and there. And I tried to sit down and do some videos, but I just couldn't do them. So I decided to... I'm bouncing back, and I'm like, you know what? I still don't want to be on camera, but I'm, I'll am i do an audio podcast for the days that I've missed, um, just to kind of give you like how much I've missed. It's, um, it's day 23, so it's October 23rd, 2019, and my last review was on day 16, which is October 16th. So I will be covering days 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Um, I still have a few days to catch up on, um, but hopefully within the next couple of days, I'll, I'll probably do another podcast format to kind of really, truly catch up. And I just, uh, I, I really like this format as well, but I love being on camera a little bit more. So hopefully for the final three days of Halloween, I'll be back on camera. So, Um, Like I mentioned, I'll be covering days 17 through 21, and the movies I will be talking about are Hellraiser Revelations, Hellraiser Judgment, the remake of Pet Cemetery, Candyman, and the 1943 version of Phantom of the Opera, starring Claude Rains. So, um, I'm just going to start with the Phantom of the Opera real quick, uh, because that one's probably the quickest. Is um, Last year, I bought a bunch of... um, still books for the classic universal monsters and i really really liked them and i plan on doing phantom of the opera along with them but i was looking for a specific version of the movie um a cover and it didn't come in in time and well it did but i another movie took its place because waiting for it to come in and i was like I just like, you know what, I'll add it to next year's list. So it's been sitting on my shelf for a whole year, waiting to get reviewed. I finally watched it and I liked it. I really like this one. I it feels it was it's has a really grand feel to it because like the opening shot of the movie with everyone coming out on stage in this giant opera house, it's really, really awesome i love the way the camera moves right off the bat i mean i'm a sucker for that (laughs) um i really love just the way a camera can tell a story as well in the movie so i really really liked it it's about this guy claudine or claudine or i think it's claudine Uh, um i'll play by claude rains he is a violinist in the opera and he he got dismissed dismissed and he sunk all his money into this one girl and her singing lessons. So he's broke. He's <laughs> down on his luck. I mean, he's like, he can't pay for soup, you know, like he's really rock bottom. And all the, and he has this one thing left is his concerto. So he tries to sell it off or get it published. And in doing so, he, he, he snaps because he mistakes people to tr- um, stealing it. So he kills the guy uh, who was um, publishing it, and he runs off into the night after he was um, what, uh, scarred by some acid. And that's basically him haunting the ballroom, or the opera house, I should say. He's constantly like leaving threats, like make, trying to physician this person who he sunk all this money into into prominent pro, you know, like in, into the lead role <laughs> so and in doing so he, he's uh, drugging people he's killing people He like, there's this really cool moment in the movie where he saws a huge chandelier onto the crowd and yeah, it was like like for a minute there, it was a little different because I was like, did he really kill a lot of people by dropping that on there? And sure enough, he did, because um, 
and obviously they couldn't show like the aftermath, but it was heavily implied. And I'm like, oh wow, that was for 1943. I'm like, that was like different. <laughs> I really liked that. And it was in Technicolor, so everything was like has that like vibrant feel to it. And I just really like this one. I like it's very different from the other classic Universal monster movies. And I just really, really liked this. And the the big climactic at the end, um, down in the sewers underneath the um, op- uh, the opera house, was just awesome. I loved all the sets of, on this movie. I loved it. I really, really do. So, um, I my only nitpick thing is that this movie had a little bit too much singing um, in a foreign language. It had the uh, it was all done in French of the scene and I wish it like maybe done like one at the most maybe two um uh, just to kind of really show that this person could really really sing and like like he was not wasting his money for no reason which we do find out that he was right in doing so so in helping this um understudy rise to stardom so um that was really all I gotta say about Phantom of the Opera. I really enjoyed it. I was hooked from the first mo- movement of the camera. So, um, next up is Candyman. Tony Todd as the title character, Candyman. Um, I'll, and Virginia, Ma- um, Virginia Madsen. She is amazing in this movie. I think she's done really well. This is a very different kind of slasher flick. It. Tony Todd as Candyman is up there with Freddy, Jason, Michael, um, Hellraiser, which I'll get to in a little bit. I mean, he's an iconic horror icon um, because the Candyman movie really is different from all the others. This one is a different kind of slasher flick. This one, like I've mentioned, it was just feels different. It has... It kind of has an urban legend backstory, and once we find out about that backstory, about what, like how Candyman became the Candyman, uh, you know, he was an artist in the night or 1880s. He fell in love with a white girl because Tony Todd is a like six foot tall black man and with a really deep voice and he's just like he has a very strong presence on screen and in that day and age like interracial couples uh, just uh, just didn't fly so um he the the parents or like the community found out so he cut off um, the community cut off his hand because he was an artist and he was stung to death by bees in this um, Chicago area where it's called uh, Cabrini Green I think that's the um, like little the projects where this movie takes place and where kind of like the central hub of this candy man lore has kind of gone down because there was a murder there and it was I'm not doing it justice. I mean, <laughs> you just have to watch it. I mean, it's done really well. It's really bloody. It's really scary. I, it's, it kind of caught me off guard. I haven't seen this movie in quite some time. And I watched the director's cut version of this movie. And really the only version, only difference is, like, there's a scene in the movie where Virginia Madison's character, um, Helen, is strapped in a wheelchair because um, throughout the movie she's slowly going insane you know um due to um tony todd's influence on her and because she's a um, student who is um trying to write a thesis on urban legends and her subject is candy man so she's got way into deep because it finally like caught up with her and she's really like waking up in bathrooms covered in blood and just some horrific events unfolds and the the big climax at the climax at the end was just fantastic it just like it feels like a different slasher flick i mean candy man is a totally different kind of villain because he is a victim himself 
and he like he ends up kind of um, taking his torment on to others. Like unlike Freddie, you know, he was implied to be a child molester, and Jason, he was a victim himself. Um, you know, like he was disformed um, as a kid, and people weren't watching him. The council, camp counselors weren't watching, so he drowned. Um, but this one was just different, you know. It just felt different, and it was nice, and it was just, just I can't describe that enough. It just, <laughs> this movie's great. Just go watch it. Um, so, next up is the remake of Pet Cemetery. Um, what to say about this movie? Um, was it necessary? I think so. I mean, the first one, the original, you can't be beat, but I liked the darker tone of this one. I really liked it, and I liked the, this, the twist a little bit. Like, like in the trailer, you know, like the girl is the one who gets ran over by the, the semi. And I think that's a better twist, a better change up, because, um, you just can't do some of the things with um, smaller children these days, and I think making the girl just a little bit older, or, and it didn't it didn't even really matter that it was a girl or not, but just um, just aging the kid up a little bit helped a lot in like what they was able to get away with on screen. So, um, the special effects was amazing. I love Jason Clark. I think he's a, I think he's a really good actor, and I think he was really good in this. Um, John Lithgow, uh, <laughs> he was good as well. I think I think the whole cast in this movie was just done really well. I mean, it was well acted, well directed. I think the special effects was done really well. It had a really creepy feel to it. I love the I love church in the film. Um, even though we can't beat the original church, you know, just an all gray cat. But I do like this one. It has a little bit of color to him. Like, uh, her, uh, or I think it's him. But it's just, I, I just, I just like, like, the multicolored cats. And so I like, I like, um, the look of the new church as well. So that was a plus. That was always my, like, what church was going to look like in the new remake when they announced it and everything. Um, Basically, you know the the plot of Pet Cemetery is um, they there's this um, Indian like this sacred burial ground behind this house. Um, this new family moves in and they find out there's a burial ground where people go to bury their cats and animals and stuff called the Pet Cemetery. But beyond that, there's another burial ground where if you bury the dead, they will come back to life, but they're not quite the same, so, and sometimes dead is better, <laughs> and that's just, if you've seen the original, you'll kind of, you'll know what kind of beats this one will make in terms of what's going to happen, but like I mentioned, like, they switch up um, the little boy for a girl who gets hit, and and a little bit more things, and just, I really liked it, I think it was just a lot of fun, I, it was different enough, but it was also just what I thought was needed, you know, given the source material based on Steaming King, so, I, I definitely don't regret purchasing it, I'll definitely rewatch it again, later in the month, um, just because I think it's a good, creepy, dark movie to watch so um for my final two movies are hellraiser revelations and hellraiser judgment i've been working to finish this franchise for quite some time the hellraiser franchise i have never watched all of them i've got through one through four in a previous year on the 31 days of fright and then i stopped so um, <laughs> I don't know why. I think because some movies that I wished I had on that list became available, or I just happened to come across on television. So I'm like, yeah, totally like taken out, trying to figure out what could have been taken out. And sadly, Hellraiser movies cat getting uh, moved off the list. So um, as I have mentioned in the previous recording or previous reviews for the Hellraiser franchise is that the sequels from Inferno all the way down to Judgment 
uh, that's six through ten uh, <laughs> installments. They you can definitely see the noticeable dip in quality in terms of writing, special effects, acting, just overall across the board on each of these films. Even though there are some hidden gems within the franchise, I think Deader, I think that's uh, number eight, no, oh, number seven. And Hell World wasn't too bad, which was number eight. But, um, but six and seven... Or okay, that's Inferno and Hellseeker. Those were okay because I think, um, what was it? Inferno, Hellseeker, Deader, and Hell World. I think they were all supposed to be different movies. They weren't originally written as um, Hellraiser scripts. It's, they were always something else, and then they turned them into Hellraiser movies. So, and you can definitely see them definitely with the first few. Um, Hell, Hell World, I think it was definitely written as a Hellraiser film in mind, but it, but the mashup between what the previous script was and then Hellraiser m- motives and you know the vibe and the characters and stuff like that kind of mashed a little bit better than the previous. Um, um, what's it called? Uh, previous chances or previous um takes at making a uh, hellraiser movie so with hellraiser revelations and judgment um these are the first times um that bradley isn't the title character pinhead uh, he passed on these two films uh just because the scripts was not very good or that he had to sign a from what I read online that he had to sign a non disclosure agreement for reading one of the scripts and he's like, No, I'm not gonna do that so he just chose not to do it. And it was different. Um Revelations was just terrible. I'm just gonna jump right into that. It was just um it was like seventy five minutes long. I don't even think the credits wasn't I mean I think it was shorter than seventy five, not including credits. So it wasn't very good. They tried to do some incorporations from incorporate from a few themes from like the first one where this guy has needed like actual blood to kind of build his body back up. It just it was so hastily done and it was terrible. The special effects weren't very good. Uh, just it felt weird. It just about these two boys who were partying in, in Tijuana, Mexico. And they come across the puzzle box and things kind of start going wrong for them and they've gone missing. And so um, I'm not quite sure how much time has passed, but like the parents of these two kids are having dinner and goes up and things aren't quite right. So, um, I'm not going to spoil the twist because if you're glutton for punishment and have to watch this movie, go ahead. Um, But then we move on to Hellraiser Judgment, which was, oh, I think was my new favorite of the the sequels from out of the six through ten. I think this one was done really, really fun. It was different. It was dirty. It was grosser. And there's a couple of moments where it kind of made me like, kind of like, ugh, you know, like really made me sick to my stomach here. Uh, because we get introduced to some new Cenobites, on, on which we haven't seen in quite some time. And we get the auditor, the assessor, the judges and the surgeon. I think, you know, they're, that's the one that kind of gets left off the list, but this one, but you do see the surgeon here and there. Um, but I really like this one a lot. It was very different. This one definitely feels like a Hellraiser movie. I mean, it's for the first one, uh, for the first time in a while that really truly felt like a Hellraiser movie. So, um, just to kind of give you a quick synopsis is that there's a killer going around killing people, um, due to the 10 commandments, you know, like leaving like body parts, kind of like quoting the 10 commandments. And the movie opens up on such a like gruesome, gruesome way. And it's done so well. It's so different. I was actually hooked from the very beginning. I really, really liked this one. And 
So, and Pinhead's like this. Uh, I, I can't really talk about the ending. And if if you, you skip Revelations, don't even watch it. Just go to Judgment. It was actually done really well. I enjoyed it a lot. So, um, <laughs> just how do I? I do want to talk about this movie. Um, other than the special effects are done really well, the ending was really nice. It definitely felt like a hey, there there could be a possible sequel, and I would like to see where it goes from there. I really really would for like actually for the first time out of these sequels, like oh I would like to actually see a little bit more of this continuation of this particular storyline. So. It's really nice to see it that I like that actually was like, oh wow, like I was surprised I actually felt like that felt that way towards a Hellraiser sequel, so um we get another actor to play pinhead once again, and because the pin the guy who plays pinhead in revelations just was not very good. I just did not care for him whatsoever. he just didn't have that pinhead vibe and then the new actor who's playing pinhead in judgment was perfect i mean i think he uh, if there was a successor to dead bradley i think this one was actually done pretty well in my opinion he, i mean he's definitely no duck bradley but it was done really well i really liked it i really liked him as an actor and and what makes this movie stand out is that the previous installments the Cinnabites weren't in the movie a lot. They always showed up there towards the end, and they kind of get mixed in throughout the movie in very short bits. But this one was a Cinnabite-heavy movie, and I really, really liked that a lot. And the auditor, he basically inks these um, pages of all the, your wrongdoings on pages of flesh, inked in blood, you know, of, of your own blood. Then the assessor eats them and then pukes them up. And then the judges kind of are these three naked women kind of rummaging their hands through the mess. And they either say you're guilty or um, or not guilty. And if you're guilty, you move on to the surgeon where they basically skin you alive and for cleansing. And and it was like, oh man, it, it was really gross. <laughs> it was just really, really gross, but it was done really well. I liked this. I think it had to be something new had to be done, no matter what. So, um, that's really all I gotta say about each of these movies. I do have a rating scale: one being run of the mill horror, two best watch with the group, three more than average horror, but adds nothing new to the horror genre. Four helps move the horror genre forward, and five being a horror classic. Phantom of the Opera is a 5. It's a horror classic. Candyman is a 5 as well. Um, a horror classic. Pet Cemetery, I think that one's a 2. It's definitely best watched with the group. Um, Hellraiser Revelations, pass. I, I don't say this very often, but just it's, a, it's, it's definitely just pass on it. it. It's a 1 regardless if I had to give it a rating, but it's just not very good. And Judgment, I think it's... Um, I think it's a two as well. It just um, it's definitely best watch with the group, just because it is kind of gritty and dirty, and and especially if you have some friends who are really into horror, would probably get a kick out of watching this with some friends. So, um, that's really all I gotta say. Um, I know this is a very long video, so please click subscribe, um, like, comment, and share all these videos I would like on this video. I want to hear what you thought of my thoughts on these films. And hopefully within the next few days, I'll be all caught up. Um, as always, I am the one and only MSJ. Click the bell to stay notified. Max for short. And goodbye. <laughs>